everyone. My name is Dr. Ray Pastor, and today I'm going to talk about and review the Garmin Vivo Sport, and I'm going to talk about some of the differences of the Vivo Active, show some pictures of the sizes. So right now I'm wearing my Vivo Sport. I've had it for, you know, a little over a week now. I've been testing it with a number of different things against a number of different devices like Apple Watch, Vivo Active. I'm just kind of trying to see like what it would do, what it was possible to do, how much I could push it and everything. All right, so let's talk about the Vivo Sport. Um, the first thing I want to talk about here is what I like about the Vivo Sport. <clears throat> so if we take a look at my screen, we see that A, it tracks really well indoor and outdoor. Um, I've had no problems using it for running, for walking, biking, anything like that. Very easy to track. Um, in fact, the, you know, the GPS and the heart rate monitor have matched a Vivo Active and Apple Watch compared side to side, even during my runs, holding up my wrist and looking at both. They're usually spot on, might be off by one or two beats, but for the most part, they're exactly on. Um, <clears throat> same thing with resting heart rate compared to all of them, all the same. So, you know, really good activity tracker for what you get. Um, I really like that it's comfortable and small. You don't even know it's there. You know, I used to wear a Vivo Active HR and I could not sleep with the thing. Um, it just was impossible to sleep with. It just was too uncomfortable. I really just can't wear a watch all around the house. I love wearing a smartwatch when I go out, when I'm working, when I'm out to dinner or something like that, but it's not something I want to just wear around the house when I'm lounging around. It's just not comfortable. This fits the bill. I can wear this 24 seven, not even think about it. You don't even know it's there. Um, it's nearly as as powerful as the Vivo Active 3. It, I'm going to review some of the differences, but it, it's nearly as possible. It also does a lot of the same things that the Forerunner 935 and Phoenix do. And I'm going to talk about some of those features um, that I really like that it does. Um, it's easily the best fitness band available. You know, it that's compared to bands. When I'm talking about bands, not a smartwatch, but a band. It's very easily. It's got full GPS. It's waterproof. Um, I can turn Bluetooth on and off, stuff like that. Um, it tracks much better than old tech did, like it just compared to my the, me tracking with the Vivo Active HR, just much better. Like it actually recognizes steps. It's much, much quicker. The processor, everything about the tech has changed. You know, it, this also has the new 24-7 um, heart rate, which records your heart rate every second. Um, so it's a much better, it's also an optimized sensor from the old technology of Garmin, so it's much better in that regard. So if you're thinking about upgraded to the new technology, you know, you have one of the old Vivo Smarts or <clears throat> Vivo Active, it's definitely worth upgrading to the Vivo Sport, Vivo Active, Forerunner Phoenix. Even if you have the Phoenix 3, it's probably worth upgrading to the new Phoenix just to get some of that better stuff. It has changed a lot. Um, <clears throat> it does have a lot of good features that, you know, more expensive watches from Garmin have. And they're important ones like VO2 Max has, Cadence has, Fitness Age, age has, Stress, and you know those things that the higher end watches have. It doesn't have things like lactate that the Forerunner and Phoenix have, obviously. Um, <clears throat> you know, so it's missing some of that stuff. But overall, you know, it does have a lot of their features for tracking, which is really nice. You know, considering it's all packed into this little band, it's really nice. Um, it's much smaller than the Vivo Smart HR Plus. I'm going to show a picture of them side by side. And so far, I've had no problems with the touchscreen. You know, I've been really, really sweaty after runs and biking and everything. And um, no problems touching it. Fine. Works fine. I haven't had an issue yet. Um, I'll, this will really get tested when I go surfing, and I'm going to test it surfing. I haven't done that. I'll create a whole new video around, you know, surfing and the, one of these devices. But it, it has not had any problems so far. All right. What don't I like or what do I think can be improved? Um, first of all, I really think that what they need to do is the double tap is kind of awkward at first. It took me like two or three days to really get the double tap. That's how you start and stop an activity. Um, I really think that, you know, that could be improved. Um, there are, so when you're actually using the Vivo Sport, when you're done with an activity, there's a do you want to save or discard, and there are these two big buttons. I don't know why those two big buttons aren't also used to start in that stop an activity as well. I think that's a software issue, and I think Garmin could address that. Will they? Probably not, but I think they could, and if they're going to do something, I think that'd be a nice feature. 
Um, also, battery percentage would be really nice to see. It takes me like four screens to actually get to my battery percentage. Be really nice just to have that on one of the main screens. Um, and I think this is actually a bug, but when I'm in Garmin Connect, I can't see my heart rate zones that I ran in. Um, and I'm not sure if that's a bug or not, because the watch itself displays the heart rate zone. So I don't know why it's not showing in the app. Um, so I think it might be some kind of bug that just needs to be fixed. And there is no way to restart the device, which is something that if you know from any having any technology, phone, watch, whenever it's kind of acting up, sometimes a fresh restart is all it needs to get itself back together again. So I think that would be really important. All right, some of the differences from the Vivo Active 3 that I've noticed. Um, so when comparing this to the Vivo Active 3, here are the differences, because I think those are the two people are comparing. They're asking themselves, should I get the Vivo Sport? Or should I get the Vivo Active? Maybe even should I get an Apple Watch? I don't think anyone's saying, should I get a Vivo Sport or a Phoenix 5? Because they're just too significant. You know if you need a Phoenix 5 or not versus the Vivo Sport, which is not really geared towards the same thing. So main differences from the Vivo Active. First of all, there's no indoor swimming on this, no golf, no indoor rowing. You know, activities like that, it just doesn't have. And some of those, it's not going to matter because there is a cardio option on this. But, you know, it, it doesn't have some of that stuff. Um, it is missing the HR zones, as I mentioned, in Garmin Connect. I don't know if that's a bug or not. It doesn't have customized workouts. You know, so I can't create a new workout. Um, so during weightlifting on this, which is, is a really nice feature, it does count my reps, but it doesn't allow me to. First of all, I didn't create a customized weightlifting workout because you can't do it on this. And I can't enter the weight. So that's something that the Vivo Active does. To be honest with you, I really do like the feature, but it's not something I'm going to use in the gym. I think it's too much after every single set to push my watch. Same with the Vivo Active. After every set, I'm really not entering in weight. I, I, it's just not something I care to do. Um, if you're a person who does write down everything they do in the gym, I think that it could be great to track your workouts. Me personally, it's just not something I feel like doing. I kind of just want to lift and be done with it. Um, <clears throat> I can kind of remember my weights in my head, and I, I don't really need to see that improvement. Um, obviously, the Vivo Active has a much bigger screen, so it's much easier to review things on the watch. Um, and then the Heart rate history on the Vivo Active is only for one hour. That's what you see versus the Vivo Active, which is four hours. Then here are some pictures of them. <clears throat> so this is a picture of the Vivo Active HR, the Vivo Smart HR Plus, and then the Vivo Sport. You can see how much smaller the Vivo Sport is, even compared to the Vivo Active HR. When you see it in person, I mean, those rounded corners, it's just a huge difference in size. It's thinner all the way around, just much smaller. But that's a picture of all of them on my arm. And obviously much smaller than the Vivo Active HR. Here's a side picture. So the first watch that you see is the Vivo Sport. You can see that, look at the rounded corners. That's really where they shaved off the most difference. Also, look at the uh, heart rate monitor, how flat it is on the Vivo Sport versus the Vivo Smart and Vivo Active. Look at that. So there's no, there's a tiny little bump, but it's not noticeable like it was with the other devices, the old tech. Just another difference. And that's my review of the Vivo Sport. I think it's a really great device. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a really nice fitness band. I think if you're kind of up in the air about what you want to do, I think that you're not going to have any problems with it. Um, I will say that the way that I'm wearing it is I'm wearing it as a sleep tracker and an all-day fitness tracker. As far as using it in the gym, I'm probably going to use one of the higher-end Garmin devices because, you know, I just, I like having a button and I like being able to control things. So am I going to replace a higher-end Garmin device with this? Probably not for now for me, but I could probably do it if I wanted to. You know, I could run with this. I could use it for biking. I could use it for my everyday stuff. I'm just more comfortable in one of the higher-end Garmin devices for that kind of thing. But this is a good alternative to that. And I think it's probably good for most people. I'm using it more for, like, sleep. It's perfect to sleep in. You, you're never going to notice that it's there. Um, you know, I, I can also wear this with a smartwatch if I wanted to because it's so tiny that it just looks like a little armband that you have on. Um, so it's not bad. So that's really how I'm going to be using it. I, I do think it's a really great device, definitely worth $200.
you know, <clears throat> great like birthday Christmas gift for someone that doesn't isn't it doesn't have a fitness tracker because it's so small and it's so powerful. It just does so much. Really great device. You know, if you're on the fence about the Vivo Active or this, just think about what we're using, what you're using them for. I mean, for me, I'm someone who probably needs both of them for various reasons. So, you know, I, but I do really like it a lot. I think it's a really great device. A lot of fun. GPS accuracy, spot on. Heart rate, spot on compared to everything else. You know, so it's really nice. Thank you.